Welcome to Pleasant View. A lot has happened in 25 years. Mortimer Goth made his fortune, the Pleasants put down roots, and a new generation of Sims was born. But the peaceful, happy existence is in jeopardy when some new arrivals to Pleasant View start stirring up trouble, creating rivalries and tensions for all the families in the neighborhood. Can anything be done to restore the peace to sleepy, idyllic Pleasant View? Come along with me while we acquaint ourselves with each and every household to discover the answer to that question. Today, we turn our sights far to the outskirts of Pleasant View, to a small, deteriorating hovel nestled deep within the woods. Abandoned for decades, the shambles of the elder cabin have long been forgotten by the townspeople of Pleasant View. No one has stepped foot inside its rickety interior for many a year until a familiar stranger stumbled upon it and decided to call it her home. Next up, we welcome back none other than Bella Goth. Bella Goth. Every Sim in Pleasant View has heard of Bella Goth. The disappearance, the rumors about Don Lothario, the theories about what actually happened to her. One thing that almost everyone in Pleasant View was sure of was that Bella would never come back. Now that she has, what will happen? To her? To Mortimer and his new wife Dina? To Casanova Dawn, who has taken up residence with her daughter in the Goth family mansion. We'll find out soon enough. But first, let's find out a little bit more about Bella herself. Bella is a romance sim. A hopeless romantic, in fact. And her lifetime one is to woohoo with 20 different sims. Her wants mirror this, as she wishes to have what she feels will be her very first woohoo with a sim. Obviously, her memories are very vague, and she has forgotten quite a lot. But, Bella remembers. She remembers this town. She remembers a man she used to call husband, and children she used to call hers. And she remembers the shocked face of a handsome man as she was ripped away from everything she had ever known. But who, who is Bella? Bella is
is a Scorpio. She is very fit, very neat, and very nice, but also very serious and very shy. She's also somewhat active, but then again, I suppose she'd have to be for all that she's been through. As Bella has just returned and is currently in hiding, she is, of course, unemployed. But no worries, she has a task up her non-existent sleeve. Bella has points in every single skill, one in cooking, mechanical, and logic, two in charisma, body, and creativity, and four in cleaning. A sim of many skills is she. Her interests include crime, environment, sports, work, and travel. And she has dipped her toes in many different hobbies before she found her passion in tinkering. As for turn-ons, Bella is quite taken with fit sims and some tidy whities but for whatever reason, dislikes those with brown hair. Diving into her memories will show us the true extent of her amnesia, as she remembers very little of her previous life. She remembers her brother Michael, and that he has passed away. She remembers attending college, but does not remember passing. She remembers making a friend, and having her very first kiss with a mysterious and long-forgotten Sim but she does not truly remember who Mortimer, Cassandra, or Alexander are. When we look into her relationship panel, we can see that she's still in love with Mortimer, friends with Cassandra, and nearly so with Alexander. Deep down, she knows who they are. She's just forgotten the true extent of her relationship with them. Will she find them and find the truth? Let's find out. Before we begin Bella's story, I'm going to restore a few tiny pieces of Bella's true self. I'm going to start by calculating her secondary aspiration, which has turned out, unsurprisingly, to be fortune. I'm then going to grant to her a college degree. I'm going to select Literature because this best suits her personality. I've randomized the GPA, and now I'm going to give to her all those extra one slots that she's unfortunately lost. I'm also going to spawn the ACR adjuster and tweak it just to my liking. And that's all that I can do for Bella right now. She's going to have to figure out the rest. Let's go with her and see what becomes of Bella Goth. Um... Okay, then. <laughs> she really loves the smell of fragrant shrooms in late summer. <laughs> Now that she's done sniffing away, Bella is going to get right to it while the notion is still fresh in her head. She needs to get her story out there, or at least what she remembers of it. She needs Sims to know the truth about what happened to her, and what can happen to them. She still doesn't know why, why they didn't return her why they dropped her far away in a strange desert town. But she remembers the fear, she remembers the pain, and she remembers what came afterwards. Bella seeks justice, justice for what has happened to her, for all the years and tears she lost. She knows this was no random abduction. Someone was responsible. Whether due to her written word or not, eventually the truth would snake out. 
As Bella dives deep into her work, mm -hmm. she gets a surprise guest. It's Brandy Broke, who'd seen the steam rising from the old elder cabin and has come to investigate. Bella, ever polite, is going to head out to greet her. Who knows? Maybe she knows something about her disappearance. Whom? Bella fries up some hot dogs for her new acquaintance so that they can talk over brunch. Brandy mentions how mm, Bella had been we rich, but that her riches had now gone to other investors. Mm, she also mm. tells her that Pretty everyone believes she had died a long time ago, and that they even had a grave for her at the old cemetery. Mark, oh. mm -hmm. Bella asks uh, if anyone's me, placed huh? any flowers there for her, mm, but Brandy so? tells her no. She says that Mortimer told everyone that Bella was still alive, <laughs> and that it was only a matter of time before she returned. <sighs> Grateful, Bella thanks her and bids her farewell. She has work to do. She pieces together what little Brandy has told her and puts it to paper. So, Mortimer remarried. And Cassandra, she married someone named Don Lothario. That name sounded awfully familiar to her. Bella works well into the evening, until the old phone by the front door begins to ring. Who could that be, Bella wonders? A familiar voice answers. It's Mortimer. Brandy must have contacted him about Bella when she got back to her house. And now Mort is asking her to go downtown with him. Bella hesitates, but only briefly. She needs to see him, to see the man she'd chosen to spend her life with. She agrees and hops into the shower to ready herself for him. The taxi doesn't take long to get there, but Bella does take a while to get out to it. And check out Brandy just strolling by like she's done nothing wrong. Unable to procrastinate any longer, Bella climbs into the taxi and takes a deep breath. Well, here she goes. And here they are, crawling to a stop in front of downtown's most luxurious bowling alley. And it looks like they're not the only ones. Hello, Don. Alone, are we? Already looking for some ladies behind Cassandra's back. And it looks like Mortimer and Bella have given each other a very warm welcome. The memories of him must already be flooding back to her. They head into the lot and get to some serious pool. No talking for them just yet. They need to collect themselves first, I guess. In the meantime, let's see what Don's getting himself into. He's decided to throw some balls around, and he's surprisingly bad at it, too. Angry much, are we, Don? Back upstairs with Don in the background trying to hit those pins for all he's worth, the pool game continues. Shamlin. Strike! Look at that happy face. It's been a good hour since Bella and Mort got here and neither one has attempted to strike up meaningful conversation. Exasperated, Bella comes down to Don's level and shows him how to handle those balls. Don is clearly impressed. He's also fawning over Coral. You really do like a Mulder, huh, Don? 
Bella has had enough bowling for now and heads down for a quick drink at the cafe. But Don stops her before she can get one. He must be completely taken back. He's just staring daggers into her. Don and Moore begin talking. Is that really Bella? After all this time? Does she remember anything? Bella slithers away to the cafe bar for a drink, and it doesn't take long for Mort to join her. He's decided he really needs to talk to her and get to the bottom of this. He begins telling Bella about his marriage and that he always felt like he was cheating on her, so he doesn't feel bad about meeting her like this. Bella begins pounding on back, and after sitting in silence for a while, Mort leaves. He's just not ready to ask her anything just yet. <sighs> Control yourself, Don. Jeez. Now that Mort is gone, Bella has gone over to confront Don. This was definitely the man she remembers seeing right before she was abducted. Why was she there? Why the telescope? Why was she even up there? Was there anything else that happened? Mortimer appears and cuts that question short, and Bella decides it's now time to have a serious conversation with her now ex-husband. Mort asks her where she's been, what happened to her, why there's been rumors about her and Don. But Bella just shrugs off his questions. She really doesn't know how to answer him right now. It's all too much for Bella. She relieves some stress by hitting some pins while Don stares at her continuously. And now Mort stares at her too. Jesus. Neither one of them are taking their eyes off of her. What you staring at, Don? The column? Nope, it's Bella. He's got them laser eyes. Bella is understandably uncomfortable and decides to call herself a taxi home. It's just all too much for her to handle, and she's finding herself incredibly overwhelmed. She just needs to get herself home and get some much needed rest. It's now morning, and I'm sure Dina is going to be incredibly suspicious as to where Mortimer has been all night. Mortimer doesn't seem to mind too much, though, because he's coming along with her. Bella's returned to the elder cabin with Mortimer in tow. He seems very reluctant to leave. It's been years since he last saw his now ex-wife, and I think he's getting a little clingy. They sit down to snack on some of Bella's fallen fruits, and Bella eventually convinces him to go home. He's married now, and his wife will probably be worried sick about him by now. More like his wallet. Exhausted, Bella rests on the raggedy old couch that was left here by owner's past. But she can't sleep for very long. Too many thoughts are racing through her head, and she needs to get them all out. Bella works through sunrise and into morning. While she taps away, we are going to sell this scraggly thing for something a little more comfortable. There we go. Not just a couch, but a bed too. Exhaustion has finally set in and Bella decides she needs to lay down for a minute. Eventually, even the most avid writers burn out and need to recharge. It's far into the afternoon when she finally feels rested enough to get up. She takes a shower and prepares for her next big venture. She's decided she needs to see her daughter. The last time she saw her, she was still a teenager. Now, she's all grown up and married to that Don Lothario so she hears. Here's the taxi. And here is also none other than Dina Goth, Mortimer's new wife. No doubt she's come to scope Bella out now that she knows she's returned. 
I wonder how worried she is about her future with the goth fortune right now. Bella, Cassandra, and Don have arrived at Doc Allen's just as it starts turning to night. Cassandra greets her mother warmly, and Don even more warmly. Um, Cassandra, are you not seeing this? You're just gonna walk away? No, no, hon. It's just a family kiss, see? Ugh, Don, you are a sick, sick man. Oh, God. And now the unsavory charlatan has come to drain every single pocket he sees. He's prepped and ready for those unsavory deeds. Oh, come on. Don't play poker with the man. Bella, you are poor as dirt. And Don, stop spending all of Cassandra's inheritance simoleons. While Bella has decided to talk to Cassandra and try to reconnect with her, she wants to become friends with her, and I think they're well on their way towards forging a very close relationship again. This guy seems to be quite taken with Bella, and he just won't leave her be. But Bella doesn't seem to mind. She's quite flattered, in fact. She is a romance sim and has had very little of that since she's returned to Pleasant View. Oh, he's very taken with her. Well, at least Bella has options if things don't work out with Mortimer. And it looks like Bella could really use some lovin' pretty soon. I didn't even realize that Nina was here. Oh boy. I really hope Don doesn't do anything stupid. He's rejected Nina before though, so I don't know. I guess Nina's weight changed and she is not impressed. No worries, Nina. We'll get you back on track soon enough. Well, my hopes didn't last long, but Cassandra, she's just totally oblivious to Don's doings. I have no words. But the naked guy in the very next hot tub doesn't deter Don and Cassandra from getting a little freaky. I swear, every single time these two go out, they just need to have themselves a public woohoo. It simply wouldn't be a proper night without one. They just cannot seem to keep their hands off each other. God, I hope Bella stays inside. It would be so awkward for Cassandra if her mother wandered out here right now. Don, though, I don't know. I feel like he's just being vindictive. Rubbing Bella's nose in it. Mm. Oh yeah? Didn't I me? Well, what do you think of me now? Don has some serious issues. I mean, he's obviously still hung up over Bella, and I feel like he's really just using Cassandra because she's her daughter. Oh, Cassandra, if only you knew what Don was really thinking. Oh, what the hell? Cassandra's trying for baby. No, no, what? Oh my God, Cassandra, you just fell in love with Darren. What are you doing? Jesus, if Cassandra gets pregnant, she's going to be in a world of trouble. There's no way Don would stick around. I feel like her poor heart is going to get completely broken, and so will Darren's. This is not good. You okay there, Don? <laughs> okay, then. While the random rolled is 74, Cassandra did not get pregnant. <sighs> I feel like we just dodged a huge bullet. Ha, oh, you're lucky, Don. You would have been changing nappies for days. Inside, Bella is doing the school cheer for a stranger because why not? He too seems very taken by her. Well, Bella is very pretty. I'm sure every sim in town has noticed her by now. Sure, just hang out on the bar floor. Why not? Oh, you sly little devil, Don. He done snuck back into the hot tub with Nina. And they're going in for a cuddle. If he goes through with it this time, Cassandra is going to catch them and he would be pretty much finished in her eyes. Nope. 
He thought twice about it, and they are not going to go for the woohoo. Uh, Embarrassed for the millionth time, Nina leaves Doc Allen's. I hope Don is able to repair their relationship after all the times he's rejected her. It's now morning, and Bella really needs to get back home. Narb food! Creebut Elu. Oh, freeze. That's how about that. Before she leaves, Bella begins having a total meltdown in front of the bar, and Don comes out to comfort her. But she brushes him off and climbs into the taxi instead. He's like, I'll get you yet, Bella. Back home, Bella immediately gets back to business until late into the night. She needs to get out all those feelings and all those memories that she's beginning to slowly regain. Maybe if she jots them down, they won't escape her again. Even if she's taken again, she'll have something, something to never forget. Hour after hour passes before she finally succumbs to fatigue. Morning comes too fast, but Bella can't sleep any longer. There's one more thing she needs to do before she begins feeling whole again. She wants to see her son, Alexander. The last time she saw him, he was still just a toddler. It's been years now. She wonders what he looks like, what kind of person he's growing into. Does he even remember her? Bella is going now to find out. And what better place to rekindle their mother-son bond than at Pleasant View Park? Mortimer has agreed to bring Alexander here to see her, but Dina insisted on tagging along. She's very suspicious of all this, especially since Mortimer was out all night with Bella. She knows she has some serious competition now. Bella spots them instantly and... yeah. Dina stares in total shock. Bella greets her son timidly, and then turns to Dina to shake her hand nonchalantly. Dina immediately turns her attention to Mortimer, showing Bella that Mort is her man now. But Bella doesn't seem to really care much about Dina's blatant hint, and chaos ensues. Poor little Alex has run away crying because of his father's cheating. Poor thing. But I guess Mortimer has made his choice. He spent years with Bella, had kids with her, shared his fortune with her, and Dina, she was just there while Bella was away. Let's hope Bella feels the same way about Mort. Seems like she does at the moment anyway. Meanwhile, Alexander sings his little heart out as Dina watches sullenly from afar. Ah, so this is where Cassandra gets her moves from. Well, Bella has finally decided to talk to Alexander. She doesn't have the heart to tell him the truth. Instead, she tells him that she had to go away for a while. He seems to be taking it very well and starts asking how she traveled, by cruise ship or by plane. Only Alexander would ask these questions. Bella and Mortimer started pushing these random sins on the swing sets. Yeah, I'd get off too. <laughs> Apparently Mortimer's reputation is going up. Was it the cheating or... Feeling guilty, Bella attempts to apologize to Dina. Dina seems to be taking to it. She's forgiven her. Or not. Cheap move, Dina, waiting until her back is turned to attack her. I like how Mortimer comes over and cheers Bella on instead of his wife. Jesus, Mort, have a little heart and soul, man. I know she isn't Bella, but you still married her, buddy. Ah. 
Even with the cheap shot, Bella still comes out on top and beats Dina, while Alexander cries his little eyes out once more. I mean, look at this poor little guy's face, for God's sakes. Bella and Mort have decided to have a seat on the bench. Bella's like, hey, so I want to fight, did you see that? I think Dina knows Bella. <laughs> Bella tries to listen to her son sing, but Dina has other plans. Okay, that's enough. Everyone is in shambles right now. Anger is high, grief is high. It's not good for anyone. So we are going to send Morty, Dina, and poor little Alexander home now. It's getting pretty late, so Bella should be getting back as well. She does, after all, have a lot to process. She's only been home for a few days, and she's already met her long-forgotten family, and that man, Don Lothario. What's more, Mortimer seems ready to jump right back into a relationship with her, just like before she disappeared. Bella doesn't know quite how to handle that. She is a romance sim, and she doesn't know if she's quite ready just yet to hop back into a committed arrangement. What should she do? What does her heart truly desire? I think she just needs to take it all in, one day at a time. One thing's for certain though, she will never be the same again. Bella has changed from the sim she once was. And only time will tell who this new Bella really is. She'll never again step foot outside the confines of her hometown of Pleasant View. Welcome back, Bella. We'll see you again very soon. so much for watching. If you enjoyed this intro, please be sure to leave a like and maybe even a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you like this content, and if you're just passing through, I hope you'll join me again. Next up, we'll be on our second round of Pleasant View, starting with Don and Cassandra Lothario at the Goth Family Mansion. And I'd really like to hear from you guys. What do you hope to see during our next round in Pleasant View? What do you think will happen to the town sims? Let me know what you think down below. Until next time guys, bye!